you, if you go for the call, you get the call first okay. because you're on the team. Yep. It's Alpha. Thank you. But thank you. You must call out louder than what you did. So it's Alpha and Naro. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I um. I did hear a comment uh, from Mr. Robson that he's losing the will to live, and it's inappropriate that this bill, this bill, actually talking about the Christian churches, Mr. Mr. Robson, uh, help us on its way, that if you do need it, we do need a defibrillator, the power of prayer from these Christian churches may be of some help to you in your time of need, in your time of need. Uh, so do not lose the, the will to live. Uh, listen on, and these, uh, I'm sure that these speeches will help. Mr. Chair, returning back to part two of the bill, um, and especially in regards to the transfer of property rights and obligations from the old board to the new board. And Mr. Chair, I do refer back to the submission that was brought by the board by Mr. Bajant, and excuse me, I just need to say his name, Vestris uh, Altman, who's the uh, secretary of the board, of the old board. And, uh, you know, in their wisdom, what they've also seen fit to do, Mr. Chair, is that in uh, anticipation of the change of this legislation, is that uh, a new trust deed has already been formed. A, a trust deed has already been prepared and agreed to by all the churches uh, as to the purpose, powers, objectives, and other key clauses. And so when we talk about clause five of the bill, the transfer of property rights and obligations, uh, it's been foreseen that the hope is, is that there will be a unanimous support of this bill. Uh, and that through that there's been some preparation for that as well. Um, and inside of that, uh, this uh, uh, trust deed has also too been registered under the Charities Act of 2005. So when the transfer in Clause 5 happens, uh, Mr Chair, then it will be in line with the Charities Act of 2005 with the Charities Commission on the 9th of September uh, 2014. And under uh, number CC51021 as the Christian Church's New Zealand Property Trust Board. One of the things that's also been important that was also uh, in page four of their submission was talking about the key points which clause five and clause six talk about in a sense the, the rights of obligation and they've got a transfer process. So in the succession of development into the from the old board into the new board, um, page four of their submission talks about the key points in relation to the transitional provisions uh, of that uh, trust deed, which are A, uh, that the trust deed appoints initial trustees whose sole purpose is to manage the transition from the old legislative uh, regime to the new charitable trust regime. And uh, what you call clause five, uh, part one, also talks about uh, on the form and commencement of the sector, property rights and obligations of the old board are vested into the new board. So it's important, uh, Mr Chair, that in, in anticipation they've started to prepare there too. It also goes on to talk about that this involves the appointment of the trustees and in accordance with the provisions of the trust deed. The preferred option was for the existing trust board to be the first trustees and then continue on until new appointments are needed in terms of the trust deed that is provided for in the bill. And what that means, uh, Mr Chair, is that as uh, was spoken about in the previous part one, uh, using the word flexibility, this will then allow them to engage with a new trust board, which will give them uh, rights and responsibilities uh, to fulfil the obligations around the flexibility for wider forms of outreach of the church into their selective communities as well, Mr. Board, uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, part. Uh, seven, clause 7 talks about the dissolution of the old board and on the commencement of this board the old board will be dissolved and as I've talked about uh, in part uh, B of the submission, page 4, uh, it declares at this point uh, in time, pending the passage of this legislation, the new trust is a legal entity able to exercise all the powers provided for in the trust deed but does not own any assets and those assets are still to be held by the old trust board in its role under the Act until this bill is passed and the 1929 Act is repealed. And so, uh, Mr Chair, that uh, this provision here is important. The trust themselves have prepared for the transactional uh, change that will happen in the transfer of property rights and obligations from the old board uh, into the new board, and so that preparation is important. And finalising my uh, contribution to this part two, uh, Mr Chair, um, uh, what you call part C of the submission uh, where it talks about the reconstitution of the trust board as a charitable trust. It talks that the new Act will uh, legislate the existing trust board out of existence and would then transfer all the property and assets by the old trust board to the new charitable trust. There is still a process to be undertaken once this bill is passed on in relation to the transfer of the properties and titles to the properties held by the board. The specific provisions in the bill that provide for that and which will be referred to on present, representation of the submission uh, to the committee.
And so, Mr. Chair, that uh, we see that those provisions uh, in uh, the Act are important to the transfer of property rights and obligations. Mr. Chair.